What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm pumped. We're going to finish the 135. We got a box in the mail and we also got a passenger side axle. So let's open up the box. Let me show you what you got and um, yeah, let's get this going. Get this unwrapped, see what it looks like. Damn, this is awesome. Check it out. And let's put it next to the stock dry shaft so you can see the difference. It's a huge difference. All right, first let's get this uh, axle put on and then from there we'll move on and uh, we'll do the dry shaft and we'll finish everything up. All right, next let's uh, install this flange right into the transmission side. Next, let's get this dry shaft installed. All right, dry shaft is all installed. And I just realized I forgot to torque the bolts that go from the adapter into the diff. So now I'm going to have to take the dry shaft off again, just these four bolts here, pull it out, torque these, and then put it back on. All right guys, so it's the next day here and the dry shaft is on and is all torqued. The diff is on, torqued. Axle's on, torqued. Now the next step that we have is we have to install the heat shield that goes under the dry shaft, get the exhaust in, and also change the diff fluid. I think it has a stock diff. I heard that this one will be a little bit better and not sure if it is or not, but Let's try it out. One thing though, before we get started, we have to take a ride to BMW and get the new axle nuts because you're not supposed to reuse the ones we took off. So let's take a ride to BMW and we'll come back and work in the car. Let's go. All right, $25 later, we got two nuts. So let's get these put on and let's keep going. All right, so I just realized that the heat shield is not gonna fit with the massive one piece dry shaft. So since there's no rubber, or anything like that on the dry shaft. I'm not too worried about the heat shield, so I'm just gonna leave it off. So let's get the exhaust installed, and then, um, yeah, let's go. All right, the whole car is done. So the last thing we have to do before we put the car down and uh, drive it. We just gotta put some uh, fluid. Let's fill this up. And then after that, let's just get the car started and let it run, see if we hear any weird noises and then uh, we'll take it for a ride. All right, let's do uh, the first start here and see if uh, anything rubs or anything like that. Take it for a quick spin. Nothing too crazy. Uh, I still have the check engine light and stuff, so um, not going to go and boost too much. But uh, 
I want to see if there's any rubbing issues or any vibrations. So far, so good. I'm actually going to probably roll down the window, see if you can hear anything better. I just hear the landscaper. Definitely something making noise. And it's uh, pretty bad. So I'm going to turn around. It almost sounds like an axle. Alright, we'll go back in the garage and uh, See if we can see anything. All right, so we're back, and I don't know if you can hear in the video or not, but there was a noise coming from the back, and it was every time you accelerate it a little bit hard. Now, if it was just accelerating gently, the noise wasn't really there, so I'm not sure if there's something rubbing when the car is kind of squatting, there's something rubbing on the axle or the axle is bad. I'm not really sure. But also I noticed that on hard braking, there was a noise coming from the front. So not really sure. I guess um, I'm pretty much done for today. It's way too hot. So next video, we're gonna dig into this. I'll jack the car back up. I'll look, see if there's any rub marks anywhere. And then also we'll start diagnosing what the check engine light was. And yeah, just problem after problem, but just life of the M54, I guess. So uh, I'll see you next video. All right, see you later.